Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayul Hack cell number 0333425713. Compilation of the Holy Quran. Q. A. Give an account of how the Quran developed into book form. 10. B. What is the significance to Muslims today of having the Quran in the form of a book? 4. ANS A. The Quran gradually developed into book form through three distinct stages. It was preserved during the Prophet's life under a team of 29 to 42 scribes. They wrote down the Quranic verses as and when they were revealed. For this they used such objects as the flat bones of camel, stone slabs, tree barks, leather sheets and palm leaves. Many companions also memorized the Quran with great interest. Hazrat Abdullah bin Marzud in Mecca, while Hazrat Zayd bin Thabit and Hazrat Abay bin Kab in Medina were the most prominent scribes. The Prophet himself recited the Quran before Angel Jibrail every Ramadan, and repeatedly to his companions. He also guided them about the correct ordering of all surahs. In the last Ramadan of his life, the Prophet had recited the Quran before Hazrat Jibrail. The Quran, however, had not been compiled during the life of the Prophet. Circumstances changed after his death during Hazrat Abu Bakr's Caliphate. Around 600 memorizers of Quran were killed in the Battle of Yamama. Hazrat Umar, sensing a danger, addressed Hazrat Abu Bakr, I fear that there will be casualties among the readers of the Quran in different places and many things of the Quran will be lost. I consider it proper that you should pass order for the collection of the Quran. Hazrat Abu Bakr replied, how shall I do something which the Messenger of Allah did not do? However, he finally agreed with Hazrat Umar and asked Hazrat Zayd bin Thabit to collect all Quranic verses. Realizing the sensitivity of the task, Hazrat Zayd said, By God if you had put the task of taking away a certain mountain, it would not have been heavier to me than what you have ordered me. Finally, he too was convinced and the Caliph appointed a team of highly proficient and competent scribes to assist Hazrat Zayd in this noble task. Hazrat Abu Bakr instructed. Hazrat Zayd and Hazrat Umar, both of you sit on the gate of the Prophet's mosque and whoever brings any Quranic verse along with two witnesses, get it written. A public proclamation was made that anyone possessing any number of written verses should bring to Hazrat Zayd. Hazrat Zayd used the best possible techniques in his mission. In addition, the verses that the Holy Prophet had arranged to be written under his own supervision were still preserved by the companions and Hazrat Zayd collected them together to make the master copy. He would verify every verse by first testing its reliability against his own memory, and secondly seeking Hazrat Umar's endorsement as the latter himself was a Hafiz. Thirdly, to make it totally flawless, he would seek two trustworthy witnesses who would testify to the fact that the particular verse had been written in the presence of the Holy Prophet. Finally, the written verses were matched with the copies that different companions had prepared for themselves. Each surah was written on separate folios and so the copy was composed of many folios. In the terminology of the Quranic studies this fair copy prepared by Hazrat Zayd is called the Mus'haf as it comprised several Suhaf. In this, the verses were arranged in accordance with the order identified by the Holy Prophet, but the surahs were not so arranged. Hazrat Abu Bakr, before his death, transferred it to Hazrat Umar. Hazrat Umar established several schools for the teaching of the Quran. He sent highly qualified teachers and memorizers of the Quran to these centers. He introduced the institution of Tarawih prayer in Ramadan, that offered a good opportunity to the memorizers. Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayul Hack cell number 0333425713. A Quran to refresh their learning it by heart. Hazrat Umar gave it to Hazrat Hafsa during the last days of his life, and thus became known as Mus Hafi Hafsa. During the Caliphate of Hazrat Uthman, 644 to 656 AD, the Muslim Empire had expanded enormously. Hazrat Hudaifa bin Yaman had led an army to Armenia Azerbaijan where he witnessed disputes among the newly converted Muslims over the way the Quran should be recited. The Syrian troops followed the dialect of Mikdad bin Aswad and Abu al-Dada, 
whereas the Iraqi troops recited the Quran in the dialect of Abdullah bin Marzud and Abu Musa Ashari. Both groups considered their respective dialects superior or accurate over that of the other group. Some of them went to the extent of declaring the others as pagans. Hazrat Hudayfa drew the attention of the Caliph towards a serious danger of disunity among Muslims. He said, O commander of the faithful, save this community from annihilation. I saw some of the Iraqis and Syrians ready to fight with each other over the way the Quran should be recited. The Caliph immediately appointed a team of Hazrat Zayd bin Thabit, Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubar, Hazrat Saidi bin Allahs, and Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Harith. This team prepared the copies of the news Hafi Hafsa. In these copies the surahs were arranged in the order of recitation, Tati by Torkifi. These copies were sent to various provinces of the Muslim empire along with the reciters in order to ensure a standard version of recitation. On Hazrat Uthman's orders, all the variants including many incomplete copies were burned. ANS B The first Muslim community did a great job by putting all verses and surahs of the Quran together in a book form. With the Quran in compiled form, Muslims can handle it in an easier way as all contents are available in a single volume. They recite it methodically on such occasions as the Tarawih prayer of Ramadan. The compiled version of Quran is an example of ijma of the Muslim world, and reflects unity and integrity of the whole Muslim community as they are agreed on the originality of each and every verse being the genuine word of God. They fulfilled God's promise of protecting the Quran, we indeed sent down the message and we will surely guard it, against corruption. 15 colon 9, al Hijjah, Muslims today can rightly take pride in being the followers of the only uncorrupted divine book that will continue to enjoy this immunity forever. Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayu El Haksel No. 0333425713 describe the ways in which Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman were involved in the compilation of the Qur'an. 10. b. The Qur'an should not have been compiled in written form because it did not take place during the Prophet's lifetime. Agree or disagree with this statement, giving reasons for your answer. 4. ANSA the Quran had not been compiled during the life of the Prophet. Circumstances changed after his death when around 360 memorizers of Quran were killed in the Battle of Yamama during Hazrat Abu Bakr's Caliphate. Hazrat Umar, sensing a danger, addressed Hazrat Abu Bakr, I fear that there will be casualties among the readers of the Quran in different places and many things of the Quran will be lost. I consider it proper that you should pass order for the collection of the Quran. Hazrat Abu Bakr replied, how shall I do something which the Messenger of Allah did not do? Hazrat Umar, however, was successful in persuading the Caliph and on the advice of Hazrat Umar, he decided to compile the Quran. Hazrat Abu Bakr asked Hazrat Zayd bin Thabit, the most authentic scribe, to collect all Quranic verses. Realizing the tediousness of the task, Hazrat Zayd said, By God if you had put the task of taking away a certain mountain, it would not have been. Heavier to me than what you have ordered me. Finally, he too was convinced and the Caliph appointed a team of highly proficient and competent scribes to assist Hazrat Zayd in this noble task but Hazrat Umar contributed the greatest degree of assistance. On this occasion Hazrat Abu Bakr instructed Hazrat Zayd and Hazrat Umar, both of you sit on the gate of the Prophet's mosque and whoever brings any Quranic verse along with two witnesses, get it written. Accordingly Hazrat Zayd used extremely cautious and meticulous techniques in compiling the Quran. He used all the methods available and did not include any verse in his master copy of the Quran unless he had received written and verbal testimonies proving its uninterrupted succession. In addition, the verses that the Holy Prophet had arranged to be written under his own supervision were still preserved by the companions and Hazrat Zayd collected them together to make the master copy. For this a public proclamation was made to the effect that anyone possessing any number of written verses should bring to Hazrat Zayd. When a written verse was brought to him, 
he would verify its authenticity by first testing its reliability against his own memory, and secondly seeking Hazrat Umar's endorsement as the latter himself was a Hafiz. Thirdly, to make it totally flawless, he would seek two trustworthy witnesses who would testify to the fact that the particular verse had been written in the presence of the Holy Prophet, and finally, the written verses were matched with the collection that different companions had prepared for themselves. Each surah was written on separate folios, and so the copy was composed of many folios. In the terminology of the Quranic studies this fair copy prepared by Hazrat Zayd is called the Mus'haf as it comprised several suhaf. The Mus'haf had some distinctive features. In this, the verses were arranged in accordance with the order identified by the Holy Prophet, but the surahs were not so arranged as they were written separately, and the purpose of preparing this copy was to prepare an organized document with the collective approval of the whole Ummah, an exercise of Ijma. The Mus'haf remained with Hazrat Abu Bakr and after his death, with Hazrat Umar. Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayul Haksel No. 0333425713. After Hazrat Umar's martyrdom it went in the custody of Hazrat Hafsa, mother of the faithful and the daughter of Hazrat Umar, and thus became known as Mus Hafi Hafsa. Hazrat Umar made arrangements for the teaching of the Quran throughout his empire. Hundreds of schools were set up throughout the Muslim empire for the teaching of the Holy Quran. Highly qualified teachers were hired for this purpose. Those companions who had memorized the Quran were sent to distant places to teach the Quran. He introduced the institution of Tarawih prayer in Ramadan, that offered a good opportunity to the memorizers of Quran to refresh their learning it by heart. During the Caliphate of Hazrat Uthman, 644-656 AD, the Muslim Empire had expanded enormously to several remote non-Arab areas. According to Sa'i Bukhari, Hazrat Hudayfa bin Yaman had led an army to Armenia Azerbaijan where he witnessed disputes among the newly converted Muslims over the way the Quran should be recited. The Syrian troops followed the dialect of Migdad bin Aswad and Abu al-Dada, whereas the Iraqi troops recited the Quran in the dialect of Abdullah bin Marzud and Abu Musa Ashari. Both groups, being recent converts, considered their respective dialect superior or accurate over that of the other group. Some of them went to the extent of declaring the others as pagans. Hazrat Hudayfa drew the attention of the Caliph towards a serious danger of disunity among Muslims. The Caliph acted quickly and appointed a team of Hazrat Zayd bin Thabit, Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubar, Hazrat Sa'id bin Allah and Hazrat Abdrahman bin Harith. This team prepared the copies of the news Hafi Hafsa. In these copies the surahs were arranged in the order of recitation, Tati by Torkifi. These copies were sent to various provinces of the Muslim Empire along with the reciters in order to ensure a standard version of recitation. On Hazrat Uthman's orders, all the variants including many incomplete copies were burned. ANS B the caliphs did a great job by compiling the Quran. It was a wise decision to collect the scattered portions of the last divine message after the demise of God's last messenger. The Prophet had really not instructed his followers about compiling the Quran, and therefore, Hazrat Abu Bakr was initially reluctant to do so. He, however, convinced by Hazrat Umar's advice, used his discretionary powers and ordered compilation of the Quran. If this team of the Prophet's successors had not done so, the entire Ummah might have become the literalist, instead of using its wisdom to cope with the new challenges. The Prophet had trained the companions to conduct Ijma or Chiyas in order to deal with new challenges. Compilation of the Quran became an example of Ijma of the whole Muslim world. Finally, the three caliphs fulfilled God's promise mentioned in the Quran, we indeed sent down the message and we will surely guard it against corruption. 15 9. al -Hijjah. Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayul Haksel No. 0333425713 Significance of the Quran as basis of thought and action in Islam The Quran is the last divine message and a fully, eternal and comprehensive code of conduct. According to Muslim belief it is full of guidance for all as mentioned in this verse, blessed is he who sent down the criterion to his servant that it may be an admonition to all creatures, 25 colon 1, 
it is foundation of all belief and action for Muslims. This means that fundamental beliefs and the ways to put them into action are mentioned in it. It is Muslims' belief that the Quran is God's own word, Kalam Allah, preserved since ever, but this is a glorious Quran in a preserved tablet, 85-21-22, Al-Baruj. It contains divine knowledge that the humans cannot know as is claimed in these verses, God has sent down to you the book and has taught you what you did not know, for colon 113, Al Nisa, and, they ask you about the hour, when will be its appointed time? Say, knowledge of it is with my Lord. None but he can reveal when it will occur. 7 colon 187, Al Araf, it instructs Muslims to believe in. Fundamentals of Islam, whosoever disbelieves in God, his angles, and his books and his messengers and the last day, he has surely wandered far astray, for to 136, Al Nisa. It also confirms the earlier scripts and messengers who received them, to you we sent the scripture in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. 548, Al Maida, and, and we gave, to Abraham, Ibrahim, Isaac, Ishaq and Jacob, Yaqub, and ordained among his descendants, prophethood and books. 29 colon 27, Alankabat. About Hazrat Isa, Jesus Christ it says, we sent Jesus Isa, the son of Mary, confirming the Torah, Tara, that had come before him. 546, Almeida, and, we sent aforetime our messengers with clear signs and sent down with them the book and the balance that men may stand forth in justice. 57 colon 25, Al Hadid, the Quran declares itself to be the last divine message when God told the Holy Prophet after his farewell sermon in the plain of Arafat, This day have I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. 5 colon 3, Al Maida, Quran, after providing extensive details of all fundamental beliefs, guides Muslims about putting beliefs into action. It commands Muslims to observe various acts of worship, pillars of Islam repeatedly. For example, about Salat and Zakat it says, and establish regular prayer, Salat, and pay the charity tax, Zakat. 243, al Baqarah. Regarding The act of fasting it instructs Muslims, the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Whosoever of you is present, let him fast the whole month. 2 colon 185, Al Baqarah. Further details of fasting are mentioned elsewhere. Similarly, it commands the affording Muslims to perform Hajj pilgrimage to Makkah in this verse, pilgrimage thereto, Makkah, is a duty men owe to God, those who can afford the journey. 3 hours 97 minutes, Al Imran. The Quran, likewise, contains guidance about linking the beliefs and acts of worship with social conduct and day-to-day -day affairs. This Quranic verse conveys to Muslims this important message, worship none but God, treat with kindness your parents and relatives, and orphans and those in need, and speak kindly to the people. 2 hours 83 minutes, al Baqarah. Quranic teachings frequently refer to God's mercy and compassion, and therefore, expect Muslims to imitate the same as can be seen in this verse, if the debtor is in difficulty, grant him time till it is easy for him to repay. But if you remit it by way of charity, that is best for you if you only know. 2 colon 280, Al Baqarah, honesty and fair play are the cardinal features of a Muslim community. Therefore, Quran attaches great importance to them. It says, give measure and weight with justice. 6 colon 152, Alanam. Similarly another verse says, God commands justice. Doing of good, and giving to kith and kin, and he forbids all indecent deeds and evil and rebellion. He instructs you, that you may receive admonition. 16 hours 90 minutes, Al Nal. Originated by Dr. Iftik Hayul Haksel No. 0333425713. The Quran provides guidance about the family laws and the major crimes and their punishments. For example, about marriage it says, marry women of your choice, two or three or four, but if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly, then only one. For colon 3, Al Nisa, another verse commands husbands to earn for the family, men are maintainers of women. 
for 34, only sir. Several other verses deal with the matters concerning dower money, rights of wives and details of divorce. For crime and punishment, this verse sums up the basic Islamic teachings in a concise way. We set down in the Torah, for them, life for life, eye for eye, nose for nose, tooth for tooth, and wounds, an equal retaliation. Then whoever forgives it, that will be expiation for him. 5.45, Almida, this verse, while referring to equal revenge, also provides a room for forgiveness. The Quran also deals with the food laws of the Muslim community enlisting the permitted halal and non-permitted haram foods as well as describes other rules concerning food. It lays down the fundamental principles of invoking God's name on all foods, do not eat anything over which Allah's name has not been pronounced, that will be impiety. 5 hours 90 minutes, Almida, the same verse declares certain other food and activities as forbidden for Muslims, O you who believe. Intoxicants and gambling, dedication of stones, and divination by arrows, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, therefore, shun them if you really would to prosper. 5 hours 90 minutes, Almida, earnings by charging usury was a common pre-Islamic practice that was abolished by the Quran that warns those who disobey God, of dire consequences in this regard, those who devour usury will not stand except as stands one whom Satan by his touch has driven to madness. That is because they say, trade is like. Usury. But God has permitted trade and forbidden usury. 2 colon 275, Al Baqarah. Finally, Quran describes modesty and dress code of Muslims to make them distinct from other communities. It says, any say to the believing women that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty, that they should not display their beauty and ornaments, that they should draw their veils over their bosoms. Bosoms. 2400 hours 31, Ulna, this is how Quran is believed to be a complete code of life by Muslims.